All right, folks, and welcome back to the Don's channel. I am the Don Father, and this is hashtag AFL Car Chat. Um, today's Car Chat main talking point this morning when I've woke up is about Steve Hawking, one of the chief um, the chief um, people of the AFL. He's came out and said that they're looking into reducing tackling in the game. Well. This sounds absolutely ridiculous to me. However, let's see what else he had to say. 160 plus tackles. I'm not sure that's what the fans want. He also believes that the games became too dependent on tackling and that um, he doesn't think they should be relying on it as that as much, sorry. Um, but 160 plus tackles, I'm not sure that's what the fans want. So I've read quite a lot of comments underneath uh, this media um, story and I'm pretty sure I know what the fans want now. They want Steve Hawking out of a job. They're sick of what he's, uh, the rules and things that he's trying to change within the game. They're sick of the uh, influence that uh, the AFL are having over the actual um, sporting side of the game. Um, just leave it alone. A lot of people are, are wanting to stop changing it, stop watering it down, stop bringing in new rules to suit possibly money changes to the game um, that probably doesn't benefit everyone, just the chiefs, the people at the top. But uh, one thing I'm, I'm seeing a pattern of is people aren't happy with this guy in a job. I can't really comment. I can only comment on a couple of statements that he's had. The tackling thing's absolutely ridiculous. The reason why I say that is, as a foreigner, it was one of the things that absolutely drew me to the game was the physicality of the game the tackling the bumps the hits don't water that down it's part of the game it's been part of the game for over a hundred odd years 150 years physicality can he says he doesn't want to take reduce the contestedness out of the sport but when you take tackling out how do you propose you're going to do that steve take tackling out of the game is there going to be sanctions against certain tackles or oh, that was too harsh you're going to face a suspension if you tackle that way how do you reduce the number you either re you either let it be or you have to completely stop it altogether there's no way on earth you can reduce it um if a player's want to stop another player, he's going to have to tackle them. They're not just going to give the ball up. Oh, you got too close to me there. It's your ball. I do not know how you propose reducing the number. You either leave it alone or you take it out of the game. And if you take it out of the game, nobody's going to go to the game. And as a foreigner, as I say, I would probably be less interested in watching it. So the the global appeal for the sport with no tackling would be... You'd be as well watching little kids playing like some sort of touch footy where you touch the player and they give the ball up. It's an absolutely pathetic idea. I think it's ridiculous that they're being paid so much money to come up with this sort of idea when one of the main parts of the game that is going to draw people to the game as a foreigner, as somebody, as an outsider who has no idea what Aussie rules is, tackling's a huge part of the game that people like to watch. You just need to check out YouTube reactions. Most of the reactions are on the physical side of the game, the fights, the bumps, the hits, the tackles. Um, it's not all the other stuff. This is one of the big things that people go, wow, I didn't realise how mad this sport was. Um, so I don't understand the logic. I don't know why they're wasting hours of their time coming up with ideas like this. The only reason I can think this has became an idea is because sponsors from outside of the game are dictating now um, that if they're going to invest money in this sport, they need to be sure, there needs to be some sort of surety that they are um, going to see the best players on the footy field. And if that means taking some of the tackling out of it, uh, the physicality out of it, in order for them to see the better flair players, the more skillful players playing more often because there's less risk of injury. Um, then that's that's probably one of the only reasons I can think of as possible um, investors, sponsors of the sport, of the game in the future are probably um, holding the, the all the, the cards for, in this one. That's the only reason I can think they've came up with this idea because there's no other reason for it in my opinion. Another shocking thing, shocking hawking. <laughs> He's shocking Hawking. Just thought of that there. Steve Hawking. Shocking Hawking. It really is some shocking decisions and rules they're trying to imply. They're trying to imply the mid-season trade. 
I've read a lot of comments on this as well. The overwhelming opinion is that it shouldn't happen. I think if you're a bigger club, it could be good because you might only be one or two players away from seriously competing for a Premiership. Um, and if that means taking a lesser club, somebody lower down the ladder's best player, um, then you're going to do it, aren't you? You're going to seriously want to do it. But for the for for the the competitiveness of the game across the whole ladder of the AFL, I don't think it should be implied. Applied, sorry. Um, and the reason being, if the likes of Carlton there, they've got loads of young players coming through. What's the chances of them losing their best players to uh, an, an Eagles, a Geelong, a Geelong um, or Collingwood, etc.? Some of the over the years, some of the bigger teams wanted drag. Some of the smaller teams like St Kilda maybe having a player. Somebody who's relying on these young guys staying with them in the future. They're losing them to the bigger squads, the bigger teams, sorry, because they're lower down the ladder. Halfway through the season, the players like that, oof, West Coast Eagles are in for me, I want to go to them. Uh, you know, their head's going to turn because of the attention. You're going to unsettle the players, even if they do stay. They're going to think, oh, the club that they're at stop them from um, filling, um, fulfilling their potential dream of becoming a, a Premiership winner, uh, etc. So I don't think it's a good thing. Leave it be. Have the trades at the end of the year. As I say, if you want a level playing field across the broader um, AFL uh, ladder, the league, um, you should just leave it alone and all trading should just happen throughout the closed season. Um, so I don't think it's a good idea That's my opinion on it anyway I'm sure there's other people who think it's good Oh but what if one of our best players does go Well they'll have to pay up But the chances of you Getting somebody better to replace them Is exactly the same as a smaller club You're going to have to pay up So any money you bring in You're going to have to spend big to get somebody back in That's good enough to fill their, their space The player that's just left So I don't see it as a positive for the smaller club And it, again, this is one of the reasons Why I've been drawn to the AFL It's because of its unpredictability Teams are beating everyone all over the ladder It's so competitive across the board I'm under no illusions that there's only maybe a handful of teams that are potentially going to win it every year. But the reason I'm saying that is because it's not unheard of to see Kelton beating Collingwood or St Kilda going and getting a scalp against the Lions or somebody like that. It can happen. It's, and the Bulldogs going out. The Bulldogs were premiers one year, I mean, in 2016. So it is absolutely amazing for the unpredictability and it's, well, it's best left well alone this idea, I think. Um, and on a more serious note now we'll go on to uh, Jack H Higgins who's had a brain bleed a couple of days ago he is recovering well in hospital now I've seen an image of him sitting up he is going to be ruled out for the rest of the season I presume it's precautionary measures, measures because of the serious nature of what's happened a brain bleed is a very serious thing so I'm glad to see him making a full recovery um, good luck Jack and, and a, a full recovery um, in the near future um, and it's been said it's not anything too serious in the long term as it was a brain defect since birth that he's had um, and I think they'll be able to um, get him on the, the right path and make a full recovery so hopefully it's a speedy one and we'll wish him all the best um, Jack Higgins is a really nice guy he's very funny I've seen him in loads of like um, Brian Taylor type interviews behind the scenes in the, the dressing room etc and he's a funny you can't not like the wee guy yeah, really funny bubbly personality and as I say it's such a shame and sad news to hear that um, I'm glad that he's on the recovery but we're not going to see him now for the rest of the year so sad news for him personally and his family it's worrying times and everybody in the, the uh, AFL community is quite sad hearing these news but as I say, it is turning into a more positive one now today from what I've read. And as I say, we wish him all the best. St Kilda, Alan Richardson resigned. Um, and I've read some stuff this morning that uh, I can't remember who it was that actually said it. But they've said they believe that he was put in a position by the media. Um, got our press writing stories about him saying that all these things were going wrong. He's going to get sacked, blah, de, blah, de, blah. It's put him in such a... The scrutiny that he's been under in the media is one of the reasons that's forced him to resign from the job. Uh, I don't like seeing man uh, coaches and managers uh, leaving through... 
a season, but if it's not going well or they're not happy, maybe he's took the right course of action. Was he going to get sacked? I don't know. I don't know enough about the man and, and his position within St Kilda. Uh, were they unhappy? Were the fans unhappy? Were the board unhappy? Maybe he was just unhappy. Maybe he's been trying his best, but he doesn't feel he's getting the best out of his players. Um, and for the benefit of the club, he's decided to resign. Sometimes managers or coaches do things like this. So I uh, wish him all the best in his future Um position that he might take up within uh, the game hopefully we'll get to see him back in coaching again and he does a good job in the future Michael Voss has been interviewed for the Kelton job I, I don't know enough about Michael Voss but I, I must admit I, I'm slightly di disappointed that they've took the the, the the idea of interviewing people for jobs now Kelton because I wanted to see them playing it out till the end of the season, see how David Teague does in the job. I think he's doing a good job. He's developing the players better than what they were when he took them over. Um, he's definitely having a positive impact on Carlton um, in terms of form of late. Um, I would have liked to see him playing on a rolling type contract till the end of the, the season and see how Carlton end up. Uh, have they been better off with him? And then we talk about permanent posts. Whether or not he gets the job doesn't matter. They do their due diligence behind closed doors and if Voss was a target, and view him at the end. Um, I hope to God that uh, this is just media um, rumours and it's not factual. I presume it is because it's been ran on quite a lot of media outlets that Voss has been interviewed so I'd imagine he's one of several. I've seen the Dockers coach has been linked with the job as well. Quite a strange one considering uh, the Dockers are stalling of late and a lot of Dockers fans have said that they, they think they've got the best out of him now and it's maybe time for him to move on. So is he the man to turn around the Blues? I don't know. I, I think if I was a Blues fan, I would hope that um, that was just a rumour and nothing else. Um, but anyway, that's that. The rumours on the coaching side of things. That has been a, an interesting thing said that... Uh, Pendlebury is the greatest ever Pies player. Huge statement. Very, very good player. He's a player I do enjoy watching. I don't know enough about him to say he's the greatest ever. I don't know enough about Carlton, um, Collingwood players over the years to say that he is the best ever. People would have regarded Nathan Buckley, who is, of course, the coach at Collingwood, as the greatest ever magpie. But uh, now they're saying Pendlebury is. Have your thoughts. Give me your comment in the section below on all of these topics we've went through. Obviously, the Hockley one was the... the uh, or, or Hawking, Hawking, Hawking one. The shocking Hawking was the one that... Um, was going to grab the headlines today in terms of the tackling. I mean, it'll be huge uproar, I'd imagine, within AFL fans. Would you consider stopping going to the games if they took tackling out of it? I can't see how they can reduce it. So the main thing is, uh, the way that they could do it is by taking it out completely. I, I, I don't know how they're going to propose on reducing it. If they're going to start bringing in bans for bad tackles or whatever, I don't know. I have no idea. All I know is it was a ridiculous call. It should never happen, in my opinion. Um, I'd imagine for anybody following this sport throughout their whole life, the tackling's a part of the game they love as a child. They love getting taking somebody down and, and out of it and tackling and really hitting somebody hard. Um, and as an outsider, as I say, it's one of the the main things that's drew me to the game is the physicality. So it's a ridiculous non non starter for me. It should never happen. The fact that they're talking about it and getting a wage to come up with these ideas, maybe they sh their job should be in question as well. Do you know what I mean? Maybe we need fresh ideas at the top of the AFL because there's been a couple of things this week that are just crazy. But a lot of people are saying they should lose their jobs, these guys. They don't like the direction of the sport. So maybe it's time as the AFL um, freshen things up at their leadership um, and their leadership roles and the positions at the top as well. Fresh ideas. Fresh, engage with the footy fans. Don't say, I think this is what the fans want. Engage with them. Talk to them. What do you like about the game? Really get to know them. It needs to be somebody that is more in touch with the grassroots side of things or even at club level, membership level, getting talking to what actually the fans want. The fact that the tackling things came up is absolutely astonishing. I can't believe it. But anyway, have your say in the comments section below about all of these topics. Um, 
and let me know and we can talk through the comments section. Thanks very much, guys, for tuning in to this hashtag AFL car chat. You know how much I love them and I do appreciate the support on it. Don't forget to subscribe and put the notifications bell on as well so you don't uh, miss any of our future uploads. And also check out all of our social media uh, pages such as Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, where you can see loads of photos and videos that you don't see on YouTube. So you should definitely check them out and follow us on them. And if you could be... Uh, generous enough to support the channel through Patreon and our GoFundMe which is uh, a Just Given page as well which will help, helps the channel grow and helps our ultimate dream of coming to Australia in the not too distant future a reality um, then that would be fantastic too. Thanks again anyway I am the Dawnfella, have a nice day wherever you are and uh, as I say I greatly appreciate your continued support thanks guys, see you soon